Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level Internet and welcome back. We're back. Well, welcome to Indie Plays. Please add details. Episode twenty-seven. My name's Keegan. One half to level two gamers. Hanging out with Tom. How you doing? Good to be back, man. It's been three weeks. It's I have a, a I have a second. I have a car. You have a that, car that, that gets from point A to point B. That starts. Yeah. Let's start with that. It that's starts. A good, that's a definitely uh, a good. It's actually uh, start. It's a fancy car too. So we're. I'm going to talk about it in the podcast uh, Saturday. Saturday because we're changing our yeah. Good catch, because we're changing our <laughs> schedule. So the way our schedule is going to work going forward is if you're trying to look for indie on Wednesday, it's not there because we have larger file sizes since we did the camera upgrade. They don't get up in time because it's, what, yeah. 25 You may have noticed that all the indies have been late. Uh, have been on Wednesday. And that's just because or Thursday. Uh, the file sizes are gigantic with this camera. So basically, you have to upload like quality. a 25 gigabyte yeah. file to YouTube, which if any of you have ever done that, is not an easy task. So yeah, so we're switching it around to uh, code name will stay where it Thursday. is. It's going to be 11:30 a.m. CST Thursday, and then Indie is going to Friday 11:30 mm-hmm. CST, and then the Level Two podcast is going to Saturday 11:30. 11:30 CST. And you can hear about my car adventures there. But yeah. basically, I got a new car. I'm excited. We're back, and I'm ready to jump back in. Uh, yeah. The last I've... few weeks, it's been weird because, like, I've <laughs> I've wanted to. I've not been as you know, and I'll talk about. It, I've not been in the greatest headspace, but I've, I've been. I've wanted to get back to recording. Yeah. I miss it. The prep work, I wasn't excited about. I was like, fuck it to outline a podcast but the recording part of it is always fun yeah yeah it's, the, dig- uh, the digging for news sometimes is i i miss it when, it when we're not doing it i mean sometimes it's nice to have a tuesday off because i'll just sit there and play overwatch for eight hours <laughs> but you know when when we're not there i just feel like a little empty i feel like you know because I, I i mute throughout the week i'm so used to like checking the view count and mm-hmm. kind of like uh, checking in with people that are commenting and stuff so it sucks to to be away for so long so i'm glad that we're back yes for those of you who do not know what indie please add details is this is our weekly dip in the world of indie games and indie developers where we discuss the news and in our indie excursions throughout the week we have a topic topping it all off at the end that you can do- join down in the comments below or you can hit us up on twitter at level 2 gamers stl you can see our lovely faces on YouTube.com Cheers. or YouTube.com slash Level 2 Gaming or just go to Level2Gamers.com or listen to us on your favorite podcast services, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Apple, All technically that. Apple Podcasts. I always say Apple iTunes. Have they changed it now? Technically, it's Apple Podcasts. Mm. Um, they have it, uh, statistics on there now. They do. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Your statistic. They never do that. Apple have never been one to yep. l- allow you to see the statistics of iTunes podcasts, but uh, they do now. I need so to find cool. the Google statistics. Hmm. So, uh, you can continue the discussion online, but off air, on Twitter at Love2GamersSTL, and I'm ready to jump in. I'm excited. Do it. I'm super pumped. Just jump right in. So, we're going to jump in like we always do. New releases on Xbox, and if there's crossover between Xbox and PlayStation, we're going to glance over them on PlayStation and say they're on there. Uh, But Xbox... We've got a couple of new games. It's not a very big new game week, which is kind of nice. There's one big one. Um, well, yeah, but I'm talking about in general. Like, in Xbox, not so just, much. Just sheer yeah. number of games yeah, versus, I like, right. I think, I uh, guess three weeks ago when we recorded it. I wonder if that's d- on, on design. Well, on, I, on Sony's part, anyway. I don't think so. Because I, I, I always wonder if developers are looking they don't, at release they don't, dates. And well, just they don't know like, what other people are doing no. until But they can later. push it, like pretty close to release they can push it a week or two i think i think a lot of developers do do that i wouldn't i think surprised. smaller ones not bigger ones yeah. like rockstar yeah, yeah, yeah. when red ones. dead comes out it doesn't really matter what happens yeah. even a red dead and like four other games coming out like that week yeah so but anyways new on xbox for the april 17th through 20th first up we got casey powell lacrosse 18 Are you excited about this one tom i don't even know what lacrosse is so it's no. a picture <laughs> picture hockey with nets in your hand with a ball like handball but with nets yeah it's like stick nets. Is it for posh people? It sounds like it's for posh people. It's for Canadians. I used to watch the <laughs> I used to watch the NNL, NLL, Canadians which is posh. National Lacrosse League. Okay. Uh, in Canada, the good old rough. I think not Saskatchewan Rough Riders. It was somebody Rough Riders. I used to watch them all the time. Bam, bam, I never bam, really clo- bam, bam, followed them closely. Bam, bam. It was just entertaining because it reminds me a lot of hockey. Um, right. And then colleges in the U.S. like Duke is really known for their lacrosse team. Other than I don't know the rape allegations that happened. <laughs> you don't talk about that. I don't part know. Of it, but how difficult it must be to fling that ball in a little net. I feel like I would have the hardest time with that. I would just like well, throw it, it and it would just get stuck too. or something, you know? Well, it's it's a it's a catapult, so it rolls out of the net essentially when you throw it. Oh, you just okay. got to coordinate it. 
But Casey Powell Lacrosse 18 offers fans a dynamic, fast, and challenging experience with all the excitement, speed, and scoring of real life lacrosse, including a completely reworked series of face off, shot, stick, and dodging controls, in addition to new motion capture animations, improved graphics, and in-depth stadium and logo creator, and updated commentary. So basically, well, what you want, basically what you want from a sports game. Yeah. Uh, the, Casey Powell, I'm assuming, is a professional lacrosse player. Uh, I don't know much yeah, about Yeah, I mean, it could be a professional mechanic, but could I be. would imagine he's a lacrosse player. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the game that got my eye, got my eye is I Hope. Oh, yeah. Out April yeah, yeah. 18th. Play as a young girl, Hope, in this emotional journey as she battles the dark monster known as Cancer that is attacking and destroying her village. Full of adventure, puzzle solving, and platforming, I Hope challenges the mind and spirit. All the sales of I Hope go to Game Changer Charity, an organization that supports children and families that are fighting cancer and other life-threatening illnesses. I've seen more and more of this. Actually, one of the yeah. details is about something like flashbacks this. to uh, My Dragon Cancer mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But or yeah, like even even Malaka with Mulaka so they weren't doing it. The they weren't doing to charity, people. But, but they're doing yep. it to the indigenous. So it's, I, it's always cool. I like I mean, this. That's, see, this is something that indie devs do that not a lot of double or triple you don't see, devs do. You don't see uh, EA, EA coming out. Yeah, yeah, they aren't flinging their cash towards. Fun cancer fact: uh, apparently, EA does make a dime off a way out because of the way the agreement's written. Cool. So good. That's what Joseph <laughs> Ferry is, or whatever his, his name is. That's said. why he's so happy all the time. Yeah. No, oh, fair enough. So, uh, coming out April twentieth, Babylon twenty fifty five pinball. Pinball. I know you've been excited about this. Pinball. I like pinball games with sure. realistic ball physics, six original design tables, and nine unique game modes, and an endless special table. Babylon twenty fifty five or two thousand fifty five pinball has a lot to offer. A pinball fan. Complete all the tables and then test your skills against endless table and battle in infinite waves of invaders. It's a pinball game. Yeah. It sounds very boring. I mean, pinball some pinball games are fine. I like the VR one. Yeah. Um, well, that's because you actually VR. feel like you're in you're playing the, the environment. But yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, it's whatever. Some people like pinball. I'd rather go to an actual pinball machine, yes. probably. But or I play it on my phone. I'm I one of those know. people. Yeah, I don't. Because you got that. <laughs> or if it's part of it, another game. Is that the technical term? Yeah. It's a plunger, I think. Is was no plunger's the thing. I don't know. Uh, Phantom Trigger coming out April twentieth, twenty eighteen. That sounds like a Japanese game with elements of a variety of genres like RPGs, roguelikes, and slashers. Phantom Trigger gives players a deep combo system in which to battle through hordes of enemies with a variety of effects like traps, freezing, fire, and fire as you dash from one attack to the next through this neon demonic world. Doesn't sound too bad. It looks cool. It's a uh, one of those eight bit eight bit pixel games and i think a lot of it depends on kind of like controls and level design and yeah, with those games standard what, gameplay what stuff to. yeah yeah atomic heist comes out april 20th everything comes out on 420 i don't know if that was if that was i mean planned. a lot of people because normally these games come out on tuesdays but a lot of these are coming out on fridays uh this sci-fi roguelike shooter in this sci-fi roguelike shooter i forgot a word it'll be up to you to retrieve the core that's in quotes to stop your enemies from creating a doomsday device as you fight your way through an alien-infested space station. To help in your quest, you can enhance your ship with power-ups, use different types of ammo to fight your foes, weaknesses, and manage a variety of upgrades. Sounds a lot like the last one. Sounds like a hell base shooter. Hmm. Essentially. Space Hulk Ascension. If I remember correctly, this has actually got some hype behind it. This is uh, a Warhammer game, right? Yeah. Space Hulk Ascension is a turn-based strategy game taking inspiration and building upon the classic board game experience experience with new RPG style mechanics taking place in the isolated corridors and tomb and tomb like chambers of ancient vessels lost in space you'll lead a small force of fearless space marine terminators in a ferocious fight of survival against predatory gene stealers I've never been That's a, a lot big of words. Warhammer slash space marine fan but I know the people that are you know like, the only good really the are. only good space marine game there is what's that Halo only well, one that matters. Yeah, but that's not like a Warhammer game. I'm just saying that's the only. They I know that's, on, that's the only Space Marine game that matters. Yeah, I'll agree. Saying it now. Current. Well, nope. Only one that matters. Are they on? They're not on Space and Gods. Uh, not Gods. Gears of War. Are they? They're on like a weird planet. It doesn't matter. It would still. That it would be up there. Does not matter. Gears of War contends with Halo. It does not matter. Halo is the only Space Marine game that matters. Period. Because I said so. <laughs> Continue on. Continue that's on. All the re that's a wrap up for Xbox. So we've got KC Powell across 2018, I Hope, Babylon 2055 Pinball, Phantom Trigger, Atomic Heist, and Space Hulk Ascension. Basically, I Hope, worth a look. Hulk Ascension if you're into Warhammer, everything else, you know. I mean, the, watch cross, a trailer. the cross game if you're a sports fan. 
Well, no, not if you're a sports fan. If you're a lacrosse fan, it's a very niche sport to be a fan of. I can't see many FIFA players moving over to lacrosse. I don't know. Don't Maybe. Know. You don't know. You know Who knows? A lot of people don't cross over from FIFA. Yeah. Moving on to PlayStation. Do for it. the drop. For the week of 4 17, 2018. Drop. Uh, Aseto Corsa impression. Ultimate Edition. Coming out 420. Is that a car? It is. It's a racing game. Um, I will give a buyer's warning on this. Nope. Uh, our buddy Tegrado, who loves racing games, mm -hmm. bought this game, was very disappointed by this. You bought it this morning? No. This has been out. This is the digital ultimate edition. Ah. This is the everything package. Gotcha. So he bought it when it came out, I think, back in the day. Did not like it. So somebody who is a big racing fan, I take his he judgment. He pretty much every racing yeah. game. When it comes is, to racing so games, I would, I, I, I would take his word for it. So mm. this is a kind of a buyer's beware. But look at it. See if you like it. If not, there's better racing Maybe games. Maybe it's worth the value now. with an ultimate edition. Who knows? Uh, Casey Powell Lacrosse 18 is coming to PlayStation as well. Woo. It's got the exact same description. Drive on Moscow coming out 420. Drive on Moscow, War in the Snow. That's the name of the, that's literally the name of the game. A strategy game for from the award-winning makers of Battle of the Bulge invites you to command a pivotal battle of World War II. Do you remember is Battle it, of the is Bulge it, winning an award? No. No, no do I. I mean, I remember the Battle of the Bulge. I wonder I wonder if they won just like some really twee indie award that, like at a convention best sound or something and they're well, like award-winning. It was a convention it was a convention one. It's one of those yeah, ones probably. like best new indie game Not mad about based it. on World War II. <laughs> <laughs> God of War. I'm not going to talk much about it, but that's the big one this Ooh. week. Uh, reviews come out. They're kind of that's excited. Big Do you have one. that? Are you getting it? I'm not I getting am. it. I'm, I'm going to wait till Friday, but yeah, I'll get yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not getting sure. it. You know, I'm, well, it, the comes reviews out, it, comes on out, it comes out Friday. So. Fucking insane. You know, like, I, you know what? I'm not getting it. Two reasons. What? One snake. There's a snake. There's in a it? giant snake. Did you not see that's the not a snake? That's I know, a, but he looks like a snake. It's a dragon. But he looks like a snake. I can't do that. That that look. You play Skyrim. You saw dragons. Yeah, but you were fine. But they were more dragon-like. This guy is very snake-like. I don't think you've seen enough of him to. I've seen to his make head. That assumption. I've seen his head. Yeah, That's well, if he has see. arms, you know he's on a snake. <laughs> <laughs> right? You see the arms, you go, oh, okay, it's a dragon. I'm gonna put that on a shirt. Yeah, <laughs> he has arms. He has arms. It's not a snake. <laughs> not a snake. But no, I'm excited for this one. I know it's not an indie game. Well, the other reason, the other I reason, mean, legitimately, it has some of the highest scores in the history of video games. Yeah, so. the other reason I don't want to get it is because it's not my type of game. And the physics are crazy. It's not my type of game. Gun House, PS4 Digital. Gun House. Pro yes, protect your valuable orphans. <laughs> defeat the defeat. I don't know giant. how valuable orphans are, but okay. Defeat giant and probable bosses. Gun House is part puzzle, part active tower defense as you make big combos to launch a hail of bullets and special attacks at alien invaders who like nothing better to consume your delicious orphan friends. Well, I don't want orphans it, to get eaten. It, it so. wins for weird. Yeah. So, I like I'll, tower I've defense looked, I've looked at the trailer. I need to look at it too. I'm fine it with like, tower defense Based games. on the art, I'm going to say you know for me just because it's... Uh, I looks, like the art. looks very Japanese. I'm, I'm okay with it. It looks very Japanese. I'm okay with it. Phantom Trigger! That's what we're going to say about yeah. that. Coming out as well. Uh, Phantom Trigger is a Neo, hardcore Neo slasher with RPG elements. Figure out what's real as you follow the story of Stan on a journey through surreal and twisted worlds. That sounds more my speed. Surreal and twisted is the way yes. to go. Slide! Coming out 420. Slide is a classic sliding puzzle with 100 high quality images and three difficulty modes. Nope. I love me some puzzle games. Yakuza is, 6, uh, The Song of Life. The Song of Life. Digital. Is this... Is this you could, I don't know nothing about the Yakuza series. I assume this is—is is this Sony made? Pretty big published? deal. I don't know if it's Sony. I mean, I, I think Sony is. published it. I'm not sure, but it, I mean, they are, as far as I know, only released on the Sony platform. I could yeah. be wrong on that, so don't quote me. I don't but, know if it's an exclusivity um, deal or if it's a Sony thing. Well, the weird thing about Yakuza is it was one of those games that it did huge in Japan, which is mm -hmm. why, you know, it got, uh, that's why I played Yakuza something zero. The the one with that the, was like a weird prequel thing. I don't but know. The, I, the the mainline Yakuza titles. The, the one in like it was on Xbox. I played something on Xbox. Really. Yeah, I might be wrong, but um, but the Yakuza games in general, um, they're kind of interesting because they're like a weird mix of like, I want to say like Def Jam. Do you remember the Def Jam fighting game? No, they're kind of I like mean, yeah. that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a smaller sandbox environment, and. 
and um, they have like a ton of side games in them. Like you Reckless, can go the to Yakuza it. missions. That's what I play. That's the only Yakuza game I've ever played. Yeah, that's not Yakuza. Yakuza, that's something else entirely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can go like it's karaoke. Japanese. You can go to a maid cafe. You can play baseball. Like they're they're quite smartly done. But personally, you know, if if it's a choice between Yakuza and like Sleeping Dogs or whatever, then give me Sleeping Dogs. So, but uh, they're not terrible. And I think that's it. Might be the last one, or at least close to the last one. I think they announced it was going to be one of the last in the series. So, but yeah, Yakuza, why not? That's probably the second biggest title this week. <laughs> Yakuza, why not? <laughs> Put it on the box. <laughs> why not Yakuza? So for PlayStation, we had a set of Corza, the Ultimate Edition. That's a buyer's beware for me because Degrado says it's a buyer's beware. More lacrosse. Uh, more lacrosse. Drive on Moscow. God of War. Get it. Gunhouse. Phantom Trigger. Slide and Yakuza. The that Song of Light. Yakuza super light peak, isn't it? Yeah, everything is. And then moving on to Nintendo Switch, where we have I think five games. Uh, so for Nintendo Switch, coming out four eighteen, you have Party Trivia. Which could be fun if you like if you play multiplayer I games with friends. I doubt it, but yeah, maybe. Hey, trivia games are fun. Some of my favorite experiences are those stupid games that you play with your friends. But Sony does those really well. And so does Nintendo in third party. That's not Nintendo. You know, I know, no. but you know, what, you know, what Nintendo platform is known for right, playing with friends and family with everybody. So they do Wii. Tell me how many Wii games that were not Nintendo that did really well with third parties or with families. Pretty much everyone. Fucking Barbie's Magical Princess. Riding horseback thing did well. <laughs> That's just because so. it was like two dollars the local big lots. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't agree. It's a good game, Tom. Go right. play Barbie's Magical Princess. Everyone riding with horseback a switch, riding. pay ten dollars for party, party trivia. trivia. Come back and tell Keegan how fucking awful it is. I'm sure. But I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't like to shit on games I haven't played. But I just it just. Based on the genericness of the name and the but that's what you but alone. that's what you're getting into is you're getting into a generic trivia game. But they could give it a cool like Wheel name. of Fortune. What what would you, okay? What's a cool trivia name? Buzz Buzz was a cool trivia name because you gotta go Buzz on your buzzer. That's not, I don't think that's a cool name. I mean, it's cooler than party trivia in my like opinion. like knowledge is power is a cool name. That's a cool name. Yeah, see, you're already on my side. No. Continue. I don't think Buzz is a cool name. <laughs> Neo Geo Real Bout Fatal Fury Special. So many Eight bucks Neo Geo coming games out. on the Switch. Yep, it's being crazy. ported over. Yeah. Uh, Baffle. Breaks are for losers, I'm guessing is what Baffle stands for. <laughs> $4.99, coming out four nineteen. Five bucks, get it. Why not? Breaks are for losers. What an Neo awesome name. Atlas, 1469. That's a good 50 bucks, coming out on Nintendo Switch on four nineteen. And the only four twenty game, Blaze It, for Switch, is the way... Remastered, not a way out, the but way the way remastered. Twelve dollars. You can pre-purchase them now. That uh, new Atlas one is worth a second look, I would think. You would think, but you know, it's new. It looks Japanese. Let's, let's read the blurb here, Tom, and see what it. See what yeah, it, dig in. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. It is. It, it's Europe. Like, does he have a car? Yes, he does. It is 15th century Europe at the height of the Age of Discovery, back when the very shape of the world was still unclear and believed to be flat. It still is flat. <laughs> Don't, Just kidding. Don't come out don't of the flat earther on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Searching for what lies at the end of the earth, collecting information about the world, creating their very own world map, but only the finest admirals may take on take off on these adventures. You are a trader who charters a boat to take on mass adventure, creating a world map. Are you ready to reveal the true shape of the world? You listen to reports of admirals return from their explorations and use them as a bias for creating map. The reports from these admirals range vastly from authentic to somewhat dubious tales of monsters. Thus, depending on what you approve or what you disprove, the shape of the world can be changed greatly. See, that sounds like Perhaps the continents premise. we know will not exist, while Atlantis and Mu take place on, take their place on the map. I don't know what Mu is. I know what Atlantis is. The only finished the only finished map of the world will be a subjective world that reflects your values and one where where only wait one where only that which is approved by you. Can, become the truth. This game can only be played in English and Japanese. <laughs> Just FYI. I think that sounds interesting, personally. 50 bucks interesting? I want to create a world. Why not? 50 bucks interesting? 50 bucks? No. It's literally approve or disapprove. Wait, approve for, a, wait for a sale. Uh, interesting. But Go, still. There's an Antonio Gomez yeah. in here. Why not? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a cool concept. I'll, cool I'll concept. give that. I just don't I don't like you said. I don't think it's a fifty, 50 bucks. Seems fifty, steep. 50 bucks. Is, it looks is, like a thirty dollar game at best. Cool concept, but I don't like the shit on it. So. Uh, cool, cool. Light week, but you do have God of War in there, which like we were saying a little bit 
uh, earlier that we're wondering if like a lot of people may have moved well i was saying uh, if a lot of people may have moved their dates based around god of war and the crazy fucking reviews that it's getting um because it, they released the embargo in that way early to allow for like a good week or so of hype before they they released the game so yeah i'm wondering if people were just like no nope, i don't want to go up against that everyone that has like only has like 60 dollars to spend is not going to buy my game if well it's like I when red dead that. Right. drops like again you're gonna... any new gta any new yeah. red dead any rockstar game basically yeah uh yeah cool. so moving on to details yeah do it detail number one I actually threw you off i did this intentionally i don't know if you actually read the link but the title yeah. that i put in the note was not what we're talking about oh. there was there's potentially ace combat color me shot coming to co- collection coming to ps4 but the reason i picked this and okay. you'll you'll understand i'm gonna read let me read the whole thing and get through it okay but Segren kangura reflections brings the world of japanese massage to switch what <laughs> the main line, main line. Wait, 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 no, wait, no, wait. no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Then we can talk. <laughs> okay. The main line Sengren Kangura series has never shied away from obviously sexual overtones of it of its females fronted female fronted games. Even creator Ken, Kenicharo Takaki refers to them as busty brawlers. So it's hardly shocking to busty see a new brawlers. spinoff taking an equally adult route. Takaki. Notice Shinobi Ruffle Sengren Kangura in Japan. The localized Sengren Kangura Reflections will task you with getting to know the series heroine Asuka by massaging and, ref- and reflexology to ease her aches and away her aches and pains. Mm. You will use the Joy Cons to <clears throat> quote. Melt away Asuka's worries and stresses by hand and through a variety of useful tools and deeper ex- and deeper and explore deeper relationships than ever possible in the series before, end quote. So yeah, this is a thing. It's coming to Switch this summer. And that's from Nintendolife.com. So why did you title it Ace Combat PS4? Just to just to surprise me with it? Partially. So that's what it I works. was gonna So that's what I was gonna talk about. Uh, but then I was like, this is better. Cause that Ace Combat so there's Prince and Ace Combat uh collection coming to PS4, but yeah. I thought this and the in this the discussion that would come from this is Seven better than Ace Combat. Gakura is a weird ass game. So but would it's you like always pretty good? Would you like, like to use the Joy Cons to uh, melt away Asuka's worries and stresses by hand or through a variety of useful tools and explore deeper relationships than ever possible in the series before. <laughs> <laughs> That's the quote. Different tools. Wow. I kind of want to show uh, I should have showed you the trailer. But I'm I probably going to end up being the one to play this if anyone does get it, so I guess. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. That's that's a uh, next level creepy. So we'll see. I don't know if I can handle that. Like I can do VR stuff for the purpose of being in VR. This though seems a little you excessive. Can do Japanese massage game. I did buy that uh, gal gun thing though, and that was just because it was on sale and it looked hilarious. But yeah, but the, with the Joy Cons and stuff, like using those, like I don't know. Yeah, I got. Oh dear gone. God! <laughs> He's slapping on her thighs. Yep. So this game is already released in Japan. They're just bringing it to the States and localizing yeah, it, essentially. Yeah, I don't know. You sure? You sure you don't want this? They, I mean, you, can you guys can hands. see the video behind us. Go. We should put the put the link to this full video. It's like a 10-minute... I will. 13-minute video of the whole thing of some dude playing through the Japanese version, which is what's being ported over. That's so crazy. But yeah, it's real weird. Uh, where's the other one? There's another part here. So you got you, toys you here? Get, get her wings. Yeah. So. Yeah, tickle the wings. Why not? But... They are, I think, fully clothed for the, the whole time. Ah, I doubt it. Well, oh, well there, you go. there you go. Using a little <laughs> scrubby thing on her butt. There you go. Cool. Brilliant. Well, anyways, so Kengren Sengura Reflections. Senran Kagura. That's it. You're going to get it? <laughs> this is so disturbing. It is. Oh, God. She's like thrusting into yes. no, no, I don't think I could. You got a happy meter as well. Yeah. Right? I love this. So <laughs> I, picked, I picked that just because I knew I wanted to see your reaction to it. I found it. I almost... so. Fun fact, when I found that link, I almost sent it to you, and I was like, I can't because I'm going to get this reaction live on the show to something mm. like that. And that's also why I threw you off the trail. Yeah. So Because I know you don't fucking read the links. You no. just read the title. Yep. You, uh, I'm, a, I'm a fraud. But moving on to the next one. A Way Out has sold more than one million copies in just over two weeks. That means more than two million people have played this game, Tom. Cool. Because you don't need, you need a friend. You don't have to, all have to buy the game. Well, unless two people bought it for the sake of it. Yeah, but that's dumb. Why yeah, it is dumb, but people are dumb, so... A Way Out has done extremely well for a title that's been on the market for less than one month. Yeah. A Way Out, the cooperative prison break title from the team behind Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, has sold over one million copies since its release. The Hazel the Hazel Light Studios developed title was released on March 23rd for PC, PS4, and Xbox One through EA Original Label. Original's Label. The it, only 
part of EA that's worth a shit, I yeah. should point out. It tasks players with helping two inmates escape prison. While the game can only be played co-op, players only need one copy in order to play with a partner. Which is a really good thing. That's a super smart idea. Early reviews for the story-driven game were mixed, but a way out has a rather respectable aggregated score of 79 on Open Critic and Metacritic. The sales figures are well-deserved in their opinion of VG247. We enjoyed our time to add it to the best co-op games to play right now. It was fighting Far Cry at release time, so it had... But it was uphill... it was only six hours. Right. It, well, had, it had a bit of an uphill climb. We anyway. still, you still need to play it, so I, it's going to be... Spoilers, my spotlight's going to be on, on a way out, so I don't want to say too much here, but you need to play it because I enjoyed it way more than... It had some jank, right? but I enjoyed it way more. And me and David, when we were going through, were like, oh, shit. Like, that was... We kept saying th that was a cool experience. Their pacing was so well done of, like, set pieces versus puzzles versus all this kind of stuff. And it it, seems, it had a twist ending that I'm not going to spoil for anybody. It seems it almost like a two-player version of a game, like, Until Dawn, yeah, but it's without a, the heart. It feels like a movie. Yeah. And that's what it, that's essentially what it was. But the way you had to work together with your partner was very fascinating. Again, I'll talk about it a little bit later in the spotlight. Cool. But congrats to, to those guys, Hazel yeah. Light, for one million copies sold. Their CEO so, dude, the main dev dude, I forget his name, as, is fucking insane. But uh, apparently he made a good game. So, yeah. Well, two good games now, I suppose. So congrats. Yeah. yeah. Way out. Did you see him you on the Video it. Game Awards? I did. Oh, my God. Yes. That dude was nuts. A way out. It's an amazing game. You should play it. Way out. Detail number three. Terraria Otherworld development has been canceled. This is according to VG247. Terraria's spin-off, Terraria Otherworld, has been canceled by its developer. Terraria developer and publisher ReLogic Games has canceled Terraria Otherworld, first announced in 2015. In a statement on official forums, ReLogic said that the team had a clear vision of what it wished to accomplish. However, despite progress, the game wasn't close to meeting said vision, putting it way behind schedule. That's a shame. Quote, our team has a clear vision for this game, and in spite of all of our efforts, the current state of the game remains equal parts far from that vision and beyond, or and be beyond behind the schedule from our initial planning when we shared other world with all of you three years ago. Reads the statement. Thanks to PC Games N. Quote: Progress has absolutely has absolutely been made during this time, but unfortunately a very thorough status review of the game versus its intended design showed things were quite a bit further away from the finish line than we had imagined. Taking the massive amount of work that would be remaining to complete along with the extensive time it would take to get, oh, excuse me, to get that done, how that would greatly interfere with the pursuit of other projects on behalf of ReLogic, it became clear that these leave, th this leaves things in a very undesirable state. We have to be honest with ourselves and realize that other world simply is never going to reach its potential in any sort of reasonable time or fashion. As a result, we have decided to make the decision to ter terminate the development of ter Terraria of the world. Relogic said, while Terraria of the world will not come to pass, the lessons learned and generated and ideas generated from its development will absolutely yield dividends for everybody in the future. So you know, it's uh, that's a, to me. That's being honest. No, I like the, the honesty hey, of it. That's, that's, I, my question is, what is it that was holding them back? Like, so Terraria, obviously, a very popular game, released mm -hmm. on pretty much everything. It released on a toaster at this point. But um, what what was it that was the brick wall that they couldn't seem to realize their vision of it? Like, I mean, was it just another version of ter Terraria with different sort of elements and and stuff, or was it like a whole different take on the on maybe the, the series? maybe like new systems they were trying to add didn't quite. Because it's all it's checks and balances and kind yeah. of like a flow, making sure thing. One I thing wish there was another. a little more there. I wish right. he could say like why it wasn't working. Yeah. But uh, but I do appreciate the honesty for sure. Yeah. Always good. Basically saying, hey, we weren't hitting our deadlines. Yeah. Got to cut ties and keep going. Fair enough. Sucks for Terraria fans, but yes, I agree. Detail number four. Hellblade Dev donates twenty five thousand to Mental Health America after selling fifty thousand copies on Xbox One in one week. Awesome. You can't say more than that, really. Uh, Hellblade is one of the single best uh, experiences that I've had uh, playing an indie game on any console. And it's also interesting that it's one of those games that, like, like there is one small tweak you can make to improve the experience tenfold. And it's very simple. You just wear headphones um, because of the consistent sort of whispering voices in uh, Senua's ears. If you play it with the TV, like you'll hear the whispering, but it's not quite the same as having it actually like it sounds like it's in your head. And the game itself is so well paced, so well done, so beautiful graphics wise. Um, I'm glad that Xbox players get to experience it because a hell of a game. 
but also of course massive kudos to the developers mm. for donating that much money on a subject that they clearly care a lot about i mean they did a lot of research they, they didn't do like a throwaway oh this is a crazy chick uh game like they put a lot of research into basically trying to make insanity as realistic as possible and they did a fucking great job of it so yeah that's uh good on them man that's great I'm going to read this because there might be more. Sure. Hellblade developer Ninja Theory sold 50,000 copies of the game on Xbox One and kept its promise by donating $25,000 to charity. One week... Uh, this is an update. One week on, Ninja Theory has confirmed 50,000 copies have been sold on Xbox One. This also means that the studio's target has been hit and developer confirmed that it has donated $25,000 to America or to Mental Health America. If sales reach $100,000... By April 18th, and just for clarity, we're recording this on the 17th, so by tomorrow, by the time you listen to it, it would be Wednesday. They hit it on Wednesday, they'll double their, their donation to $100,000. Wow. Um, That's so good. So, yeah. That. I'm excited about that. I mean... Yeah, I mean, more yeah. devs. Again, it's one of those... I feel like this week has been like, oh, look at the charity going on. Yeah, that's this is so the second cool. one this week we've talked about. I mean, in Humble Bundle is always something that goes on. I, well, yeah. I almost made this like last point because I think it's such a cool thing for them to do. I also okay. think that uh, Hellblade is one of those games that does better by word of mouth than it ever does by like people just kind of seeing it randomly in the store because it is kind of a half generic title. like, And everyone, they like reads that title is like who the fuck is Senua and it doesn't do it justice really the title it's a cool title if you've played the game but if you haven't mm -hmm. played it it doesn't really draw you in so if you um you know for the more people that play it the 50,000 people that bought it they're going to be going to tell their friends oh my god dude this game is incredible you need to get it and it's usually a little bit cheaper too like I can't remember how much it was when it came to PS4 I think 40 yeah it wasn't a full price at all it was like 30 or 40 so yeah I think that'll that'll only grow with time whether it grows like by tomorrow i don't know but yeah. um but yeah i think that'll do really well because xbox is really grinding for good games right now and this is a really solid title if you have an xbox and you haven't had a chance to play it i absolutely commend you if you pick it up because it was in my top 10 last year and i think it's a solid title it's i i've never played it it's great it's really good <laughs> detail number five no man's skies release date for xbox one leaked no Man's Skies for Xbox One may have been may have a definitive re, definitive definite I can read definite release date if Amazon Italy listing is to believe be believed. While No Man's Sky was already expecting an Xbox One launch, the only release window we were offered was summer 2018. Now an actual release date may have slipped thanks to Amazon Italy. They decided to jump the gun. Of course they did. As spotted and reported by IGN, Amazon Italy claims No Man's Sky will launch for Xbox One on June 29th, since it's. Since the date is more specific than the first day of summer, June 21st, this is a good chance it's authentic. The Xbox One version of No Man's Sky will, will collect all previously released content from PC and PS4 editions on disc. Will include, sorry, no, that should say include, it says collect. It will also include support for 4K resolution, resolutions and HDR. I'm interested to see how this game does on Yeah, that's what I was Xbox. about to say. I was because like, I don't think, and I, I got this argument with somebody the other day. such a taint on I that game. I don't think No Man's Sky is a bad game. No. I think it's overhyped. And as somebody, like, I've gone back in since they've done the Founders update, and I, every time they do a big update, I at least jump back in and, like, okay, I think if it look. came out of nowhere, it would be, like, lauded as being a really impressive indie title. But the fact that there was all this crazy hype, hype behind it. Behind it I know nothing about hype, over. Tom. <laughs> it fucked that game over really badly and it makes me sad I know, because I, I think that there's a lot of people that are going to be um, you know that are not going to pick it up because they heard that it was shitty for PS4 they're going to ask their buddy that has a PS4 should I get No Man's Sky and they're going to laugh and it's like you know it's um, which it's sucks because again it's, it's not a bad game it's no just, no no it, the one thing I think going against it that we kind of both ran into is the the game loop was very repetitive. Yeah, and I think that they resolved a lot of big that. issue. But like they have the crafting in there. Now yeah, the and base everything. building. They have the the creative mode. Where like I've gone in and you know how much I love building shit. Yeah, I literally went in, landed on a planet, and just built this biggest thing I could. Yeah, trying to learn how to use the the base building mechanic. Yeah, I mean it really it, now it's at a point where you can almost play it how you want to play it's it like as opposed to being. It's like Subnautica to... in space is the best way I've described it to people the way it is now. Less 
Less, less good than Subnautica well, by yeah. a long shot. But, but, yeah. but gameplay-wise, that's what wise, you're getting yeah. into. The story of Subnautica is way better. Yeah. Um, but gameplay-wise, well, There is not really loop. a story in No Man's Sky. That's kind of yeah. half of the problem. Is yep. You're just all the There's no reason for doing what you're go doing. Go to the middle of the universe. Yeah, and then start over. And you'll be lucky if you see anyone there. Yeah, so. start over. That's spoilers. That's what happens when you go to the middle of the universe. You start over. Yeah, I kind of knew that was going to happen. Which is dumb. So that's our roundup for the week, Tom. Our, our, the details. our five details. Detail number one. The Senran Kangaroo Reflections brings the world of Japanese massage to Switch. That's still a weird thing to say. Uh, Way Out has sold 1 million copies in just over two weeks. Good. Terraria Other World development has been canceled. Bad. Hellblade devs donate 25000 to Mental Health America after selling 50,000 copies in one week on Xbox One. Excellent. And No Man's Sky potentially leaked, well, Amazon potentially leaked No Man's Sky's release date. Interesting. So, moving on. Talk about, like I said, my spotlight is a way out. Mm -hmm. And you've not played it yet, correct? No, we want to stream it together. Yeah. And I played, so I played with David. Mm. Uh, we were going to stream it, but I was just like, I was not in a, I was not in a place that I wanted to because I didn't know what I was getting into and I didn't know if I was going to like the game. And it was one of those things like, if we started it, we had to finish it, which we ended up finishing it. So I probably should have hindsight. But anyways, um, I played as Vincent. He played as Leo. There's two main characters. And basically the premise is uh, Vincent... As Vincent, I'm transported into this prison. I meet up with Leo, and we kind of form a friendship to try and escape. And it's Leo's plan of how to get out, so way out of the prison. Out of prison. Then from there, the story kind of progresses. You go along to you're now out of prison. You got to escape to figure out why you were in prison. You have to get your Leo wants to get revenge. Vincent has other motives that he wants to take care of of what's going on. I don't want to spoil too much because his his storyline has a big plot twist ah. that I don't want to I don't want to ruin because. You just need to play the game Worth to figure it out. Yes, it's yourself. one of those ones when it happened, we went, me and David went, oh, shit. Um, we kind of saw it coming, but at the same time, we didn't expect it. Uh, but the game, the gameplay itself. So graphics-wise, it's it's not the prettiest looking game. You'll notice that right off the bat. I didn't expect it to be, but that didn't matter. The gameplay was super tight with how they interacted with things. So the way the game works, when you're inside of, like, you, the first area you go into, you're in the, the prison uh, yard, and you've got to find out, as Vincent, I had to go to the basketball courts, and David, I don't know what his mission was, but what's really cool is I can see him on the right side of the screen, I can see me on the left side, and it literally is split screen on both of our screens, even, even though, though we're playing, you're playing online. online. Yeah. And it is online and local co-op. Nice. Which is good to know. That's that's like that is the dev did what they needed to do right, right. <laughs> I think the big thing to mention before you carry on as well, mm -hmm. and I think you mentioned it earlier, but it's worth pointing out one more time, is that only one of you needs to own this. Game. One person has to have the yeah. full version, then you invite somebody else who, who does not have it. Yeah, who yeah. downloaded the demo. Um, Which is a big demo to download, but it's, so. it's only six gigs. So it's bigger than that. Nope, right. the demo is only six gigs. The full version of the game, I think, is nineteen, but. But Tech, I mean, like, if, but you don't need to download the. David didn't have to download the full version of the game. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. But, yeah. But anyway, so the like the first mission when you land in the the prison, you you meet up as Vincent. You see a fight going on. You go and try and break it up. See what's happening. Kind of seeing where you fit in prison life. And the the intro sequence after that series of events happens is really w good at building up the characters and getting to understand a little bit of history. what well what prison life is. Ah. So you understand kind of not why they're there but you you see what they're about to get into, how rough prison is and it's really 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 well done. And I can't a condensed say version of watching the entire season of Oz. Have you seen Oz? No. So I can't say it. Okay. But trust me. <laughs> but it, it gave me a reason to play. And then, so gameplay-wise, when you're inside the prison, one of the ones I'll, I'll mention is you have to get out of your cell. So, like you do in most prison games, there's a toilet on the back wall that you got to chisel away, and you both have to chisel it away because your cells are connected side by side, and that's mm. how you meet essentially. So you both got to chisel away the the toilet, get behind the wall so the guards can't see you. But you have to make sure one person has to be on lookout, saying, "Hey, there's a guard coming this way. Stop chiseling. Get back to the thing so they don't notice anything." And vice versa. And this is real time? Real time. Hmm. And we can see both each other's screens at that same time. So I can be like, okay, David. Like, I was like, David, you got like 15 seconds. You might want to stop what you're doing. Get back so they don't see you. And it, the solving that uh, from a timing standpoint took a little bit of time for us. But it was really good because it kept you on your toes. Hmm. And the mechanics are really button. They're basically button mashes for the most part. So, like, when you're chiseling, you're, you're hitting on PlayStation, you're hitting X a bunch of times. You're hitting Square a bunch of times to chisel. But when you have to go like pull something, you sometimes you guys have to pull things together. So at one point he had to hand me he had the 
I guess it was a shiv. I don't remember what it was exactly. But he had the tool that was we were using to chisel with, and he had to hand it to me through the through the, the bars. prison door. Yeah, the bars. So he had to hold our right trigger. I had to hold left trigger because I had to stick my hand out to grab it. Hmm. And you have a lot of those sequences where you need each other to do an event. When you get out of prison, it kind of becomes a little bit more... It's still linear, but it's a little bit more open with what you can do. You go to these different kind of set pieces throughout the, the game. Um, obviously, the first set piece is inside prison. Second set piece is running away from the guards in prison. Third set piece is you're kind of in the rest... Of, and again, I don't want to say too much about the story because the story is the reason you want to play the game. But you then set up the rest of the story of what's going to happen going forward. And it's, it's still linear because you're going from point A to point B. But at one point, you meet both families of Leo and Vincent. So... At the same time? No. Well, yeah. Back to back, essentially. So, we find out with uh, Vincent, who was the character I was playing, that his wife is about to have a baby. um, And he escaped from prison, so obviously he's an ex-convict and he's on the run. And he ends up going to the hospital and they find him and that's one of the sequence of events that goes on. But you understand kind of what his motives are of like, I want to be there for my family, my wife's pregnant, I want to make sure I'm there for my kid, that kind of thing. Yeah, I want to break out and see my kid get born so I can get put away for an extra 30 years doesn't make a lot of sense, but you know. Well, he's going to run, his plan is to run away with his family. Ah, I see. So to to get completely Didn't plan on getting caught. No. Um, And then uh, Leo, who is the character David played, was uh, busted for... For a crime, I won't say again. I don't want to spoil it because it's it's part of the story. But busted for a crime, put in jail. When he breaks out, you go meet his family and his tra- family. Like Vincent is more like upper middle class style. Uh, Leo is more of Blue his call. wife lives in lives in a trailer. Um, but the one the touching moment of the whole fucking thing, besides like the spoiler ending, was <clears throat> when you go to meet Leo's family. He has a kid that's probably I don't know. I'd say probably nine, ten, eleven. Like. He's old enough to know what's going on, but young enough that he's still a kid. And he doesn't want to talk to his dad because his dad got put away. And he's like, where have you been? Like, you're not in my life. All this thing. And as Vincent, while David was talking to his wife to say, hey, this is what's, this is why I'm here. This is what's going on. I went to go play basketball with his kid. And it was as dumb as that was. That was such a cool moment of, like, just humanizing the whole game and making you care about that his family hmm. and making you understand why he's doing this and making you understand what what's going on and the the kind of the the tear between Leo wanting to get his revenge on the person he thinks he's that wronged him and doing what's right for his family he's he stole money because he wanted to provide for his family that's that's what that's his kind of backstory Walter White yeah and he's gotten in trouble for it and he will, he's the one who's very brash very abrasive one of the things with it as you learn personalities as you go along uh like i said he's more brash you've got vincent who's more kind of the analytical like let's talk our way out versus force our way out and you have to agree on options is there dialogue trees yes okay. so that's what i'm getting to so there is literally a vincent and a leo option in certain situations and it'll tell you what they are so there's one where you have to uh, hold up a convenience store. And when you're outside, Leo's option is go in, shoot the clerk, take the money, and run. Because you need money to get to buy guns. Way to do it. My option was go in, sneak in, sub- w- distract the clerk, and then steal the money. Gotcha. We ended up doing... we did. Me and David t- tend to do a lot more of mine because we, we were thinking as, like, we weren't killers. Because we didn't, we didn't know what our crime was at, up until later on in the game. Turns out we stole something. Um, but we did not know that because our mentality was we're not kill- we're not we don't know we're we thought we weren't killers and we, we didn't acted, know if yes. you were murderers or not so you didn't yes. want to become murderers want to become in the process. One. That's yeah, that's what okay. I'm trying to say. So we played it that way, but I would love to go through and kind of play the other way and see what happened. Kill the, everyone. The outline, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the events wouldn't change. The just I can't, the dialogue probably would change all right. that kind of stuff, but the events itself would would go on. But at the very very Near the very end of the game, not the very end, there's a little bit after it, but near the end of the game, there's a huge, huge story plot twist, and I don't know if you want me to spoil it on here or not. I wouldn't. Okay. But there's a huge story plot twist that literally is like five to five and a half hours in. Um, Which is close to the end. Yeah, it's close to the end. It's about six hours long, roughly. That made me and David go, holy shit. We did not... We kind of saw it coming. But you did not see it coming at the same time. The way the way it, we did not, we saw what was happening happening, but not the way it happened. Okay. If that makes sense. 
Um, and it was really, really well done uh, with how they presented it and kind of the thing, on, the the how they had you play a role in it and what happened from that. And again, I don't want to say too much. Did they have you actually play through the backstory part of it? Like, did they show you what was happening and make you play through the backstory? Do you talk about like when... Like, was it a flashback scene where you were a playable character? No, there's a lot of cutscenes that you were playable characters. Oh, okay. Or not playable. There's a lot of cutscenes that you, you saw. Okay. That was... A lot of the backstory was cutscenes. A lot of the... Cur- is I don't think there's any that I remember. There, there wasn't any flashbacks that were controllable. Okay. It was all cutscene. I'm about 90% sure on that. Um, I might be missing one or two. But the, the cutscenes are really well done, really well produced. Um, again, the it was dumb because I told David, even once we got out of prison, like the fact that I was like, I care about the both these. I don't know. At that point, we didn't know what their stories were. Uh, when you first get out of prison, the, you, you go to a campfire and you kind of sit down and Vincent goes, so what are you in prison for? And that's how you kind of figure out Leo's backstory. Or no. He asks Vincent what his backstory was, and he tells it, and then he goes ask Leo, and then cops show up, and we don't get Leo's backstory till later on down gotcha. in the game. But that moment right there, these guys don't know, didn't know each other until they got in prison, and it just again the humanization of that of like, I care about these characters now, and I that that was like the solidifying moment for me of like. I want to see how this ends. So they did a really good job of the human element as yes. opposed to just making them two random criminals. Yes. The only part of the game I did not like at all is, again, near the end, it becomes, I'm going to I'm gonna say, kind of similar to, uh, like, Uncharted. Okay. One, there's, okay. A, there's a sequence of events where you got to shoot your way through a bunch of enemies. Just spawn enemies and, consistently. Yeah, and it's, it's not hard. It's just annoying. Right. Like... I think there's four or five waves you got to get through before you can move on to the next thing. And that game is not built to be a shooter. Right. It's it's decent, and it, it, the controls aren't horrible, but it definitely is built to be a puzzle game more than it was a shooter game. And that was probably the only point where me and David were kind of getting a little frustrated, but it wasn't... It, the whole game, we were enjoying ourselves up until that point, and then the very near the very end, when you fight the final boss, um, I was pleased at how they did it because it brought back puzzle elements as well so you're still shooting your way to the boss gotcha. but there's still puzzle there's elements involved the so they there. brought they incorporated the whole game back together um and then when i thought the game was over there's always another little segment that happens and it kept going and awesome. some of the some of the action events were great some of the set pieces were great at one point you are like i said you're running from the cops when you first get out and there's helicopters flying around guys flying around and you have to sneak in the grass to not be seen and go through or you can murder people like you have the option of either or no one will know if uh, there's no one to know exactly well there's times where i, I would <laughs> like knock one out so we, then we could just sneak past everybody mm-hmm. else but and you said it's about six hours total about six hours roughly um depending so, on how much you do terrible. and that's that's for that's for playing the story we did a couple of the side things so like there's one I looked, at, I looked up the trophy list to kind of see what the other things are, which I recommend. I regret not going through and doing a lot of the side stuff. So there's side quests in it? Kind of. You don't. They don't show up as side quests. It's just things you can do. Ah, okay. So an example, when Leo goes to talk to his wife, when you're before you go play basketball with his son, you can help her fix up her bike. So you have to go find a wrench and all this, okay. like a motorcycle, stuff like that. Or uh, there's a sequence of events where... You have to repair a truck, and you have you can go do that and get that set up. Or there's a sequence of events where, when you're in prison, you have to find certain. So you you pose as a as a laundry worker, or I think you technically are a laundry worker, but you that's how you get out. And there's things in that event that you can do to make different things happen. It mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily side quests; it's more of getting an alternate. Yeah, series of just, events to sequence to happen. Yeah, just, just add it. Just maybe add it either making it. your life easier or harder, or, or adding to it right. type thing. So I it, I can't give it enough praise. I mean, it's one of those games that I will say if you don't have a friend to play it with, obviously you can't play it because you cannot play it by yourself. It is a one hundred percent co op, but it is both online and local. Um, and I would also recommend couples that don't necessarily play games, other than the shooting part, which is near the end. Everything else is very simplistic controls. It's hold this button to move this thing. Right. Um, the only trouble, me, I joked with David, uh, there's a couple of scenes where you have to help each other like up on a ledge, so one will get boosted up and the other guy's got to pull him up. And the first time David went to go jump up there, he missed the, the ledge. And from that point forward, the game would automatically do it for him. So we don't know if yeah. if it was the game being like, this guy can't do it, or yeah. if it's, I think, I think it's just funny. the, the way the scene easy mode. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just the way the scene ended up working. But it was pretty funny because it's like, I made fun of him the whole time. <laughs> See? you can't do it anymore 
Um, but I, I would recommend people that don't actually play games look into this. That's one of the things. Like this would be a good couples game because uh, the story is really good, especially if you if you like Prison Break style uh, stories. If you like the it, it, it's just like it's prison, it's, yeah, it's Prison Break. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're literally breaking out of prison. But there's the that's not the story. The story comes after you're getting out of prison, which is the part I loved. Okay, because I expected the prison to make a good movie. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I would tweak a few things here and there just because they they felt too generic at times. But I didn't see, like I said, I, I thought I saw the twist ending, and I kind of did, but I really didn't at the same time. It was it was really well done, and I'm sure if somebody had more of a keen eye, they. But me, me and David did not see what was happening. We had a lot of theories what was going to happen, but what we thought never happened. So interesting. Uh, in the very very end, I don't want to say what it is, but the very, but the very very end. Is is a very controversial way to end the game. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna say that okay. um, it wasn't controversial in the way you'll either love it or hate it. I don't think kind of like Firewatch. I don't think it's Firewatch esque controversial. I just think it's they could have done more because the rest of the story was so well done. Kind of like Firewatch, and the ending kind of felt like we needed to we needed to end this somehow, and they did that. So felt a little rush maybe. Yeah. But I also felt like the ending. I, w- I I guess part of it. I wasn't personally satisfied with how we didn't ha- we didn't have the option to do what we wanted to do. All right. So that's all I'm going to say because if I say more, I'll probably spoil <laughs> no. it. But a way out. I highly recommend getting it. It's it's a great game. I would. I think it's thirty bucks full I price. So. Yeah. Um, and it's on every platform. Thirty bucks, and your friend gets it for free, basically. Yes. So yeah. I recommend it's it's probably on my personal game of the year so uh, not that it's game of the year but it's on my personal game of the year list of experiences that i've had that i will probably never forget sweet so that's awesome man cool so there you go big high praise it did really well on its uh first couple weeks of release and apparently it was worth it so and we're gonna play it at some point we're gonna stream it you're gonna you're gonna play vincent though so i can play leo which one's that the angry one or the not angry one he's the not angry one okay because we didn't know this at the time until later on. But it, like when you select your character, you can choose left or right, and it gives you like a profile of them. Mm. And I chose Vincent because Vincent seemed more of what I would play versus David wanted to play Leo. So mm. I was like, I don't care who I play, but mm. I wanted I wanted to play second time. I want to play Leo just to see how how different it, it is. Yeah. One other thing I want to add: there is a sequence in a hos- in the hospital when you get there, when you're going to see Vincent's uh, kids, and the way they intertwine. And this is probably one of the coolest part of the game the way they intertwine your action sequences together because again we're playing side by side but it, doing two different things so i'll be running outside jumping over things and then david will come flying underneath me and it's just like it's real time i can see him like if i'm standing up top and he's doing something down below in a cutscene, i can see him real time in a cutscene. Hmm. and the way they did that was again perfectly Smart. done um no lag issues nothing like that um, I've heard voice chat in game is a bit sketchy, so I'd recommend being in a voice chat on Party. the console. Yeah, because mm. it's it's got volume issues. But it's uh, is it PlayStation only? No, it's all oh, all okay. platforms. Good. So there That's you go. A way out. Spotlight. Get it. Apparently, is cool. the the overall yes. vote there. Much so question. My question is based on a way out, mm. and it, it being that it is only co op play. You mm. can't play by yourself. Does being co-op only hurt a way out do you think more games should have similar mechanics to this so again this is a game you have to have somebody to play with you and to me like i would put it in a similar category like overcooked where overcooked you can technically play by yourself but you want to have another person with you because they split the controller in half you play by yourself so. i think it does hurt it um but not necessarily a whole ton. Because here's the thing. It's a unique experience, right? Mm-hmm. You know what you're getting when you buy that game. And I'm assuming that most people that buy that game have done at least enough research to realize they need a friend to play it with. Most people nowadays play online. They have a group of friends that they play with or they met online or their personal friends in real life. So it's not that hard for you to find one other person to play this game mm-hmm. with. And especially because only one person has to buy and, it. Yeah, and only one person if, has to buy it. If you it, both so had to buy it, I think it would be You could even story. chip in on it and play it together. You know what I mean? Um, but it's... Because uh, David was going to buy it, and I was like, oh, excuse me. And I was like, don't, because I've already done it. and Because I looked that you only one of you had to get it. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that. That's great. Like yeah. That's that's a fantastic idea, and I, I wish more games did that for sure. I do think it hurts the game uh, overall, though, because they could have done an AI version. Mm-hmm. I don't well, think it would have been out of the realms of possibility. So the, the my, my argument, 
as somebody who's who's played the game to that is how do you, how would you do the AI when it comes to puzzle solving? Because the part the the most enjoyable part of the game was figuring out where you needed to go and what you needed to do. That is a good the point. AI, AI would kind of if you waited long enough, they would just guide you. I to assume where you that to go. you would have to find out Initiate. your half of the puzzle, and then the AI would follow suit. But I'm no developer, so I don't mm-hmm. know how easy that would be to implement. But I feel like yeah, I feel like the AI might give you like subtle suggestions here and there, mm-hmm. and then you would be like oh like like they do in most normal games. Because me and David times yeah. would go back and forth of like. Okay, we're missing something. Like the laundry room took us the longest time. Like I see where I need to go. How do I get there? Right. And uh, we just would go back and forth. Or like when we were when we were trying to break out of the the cells with the shivs on the toilet seat or the to- getting behind the toilet. There was a few times where we would we would screw it up and like okay, what happened? And we we would literally stop at times and had discussions of like, okay, what do we need to do? And I, I don't think you'd get that with an AI. And I think that's an element of the game that I enjoyed a right. lot. But I do agree with you that I think if it, with it being co-op only, does you hurt. are missing yeah. a section of audience that may not have somebody to play with. And this is such a good story-driven and the game. Developers are semi-fucking themselves over with it because if they're allowing two people to play it. Uh, and I and I know why they did that because of that very reason because they figured that if two people had to buy it then they just wouldn't get very many sales at all. Mm-hmm. Clearly, having one person only having to buy it probably did boost the sales in the long run. Mm-hmm. But also, that's half the amount of people that would buy a normal video game buying your game. Mm-hmm. So I guess they had to look at projection of like the amount of time they put into making the game and their budget and things like that and and come to the conclusion that they were okay with that mm-hmm. as an outcome that they were okay and with I, the idea of and not I getting think, as much like money. You, like you said, I think in the long run, it's that was the smart move to do yeah because i think if me and david or me and you both had to buy it it's a it's a different decision because right. you're spending again if you split it it's 15 bucks per and person you can only play it with that one other person yes. that has the game whereas if you own the game i can outpl- i can outplay friends, play with you, you play i can with. play with brian the only thing that the only caveat to that that i want to point out with this game is um so the question i had is if i start a game with somebody can I start a game with somebody else? And the answer is yes. Okay. So the only the only thing as the owner of the game, you have all the, the power and control over where you are. So now that I finished the game, technically I can take you into any chapter of that game. Okay. And so if you wanted to be like, I just want to play the ending, we could go straight to the ending and play that. Um, it doesn't save per person. So you hit certain save points that go on and they call they're chapter based. So when that happens, that's kind of how you can you can do that. So yes, as long as you remember where you're at with that person, you can play with multiple people at the same time, which I like. Not same time, but like different times the same time. You just have to start it at a different chapter. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, but I think it's yeah, it's it, it's a great idea, I uh, uh for sure. Um, I don't want every game to do this, but I do like when no. games like games like this happen because I, it's And clearly this awesome. guy, uh, what's his name again? Joseph Ferris. Thank you. I think he is um a fan of this type of behavior because his previous title, Brothers, Tale of Two Brothers, whatever it's called, was yeah. very similar in in uh, co-op mechanic uh terms. So clearly he's a fan of playing with friends and um you know, that's that's fine that's uh that's a noble cause if you will but i uh yeah i do i mean he can't he's not mad about it right i mean the dude is just basically like he made a movie called balls by the way sounds (laughs) sounds about right but you know if he um if he's coming out and saying this is a great game we put a lot of work behind it please pick it up clearly he was hoping that there would be a decent reaction to it mm-hmm. and i'm glad that there has been a decent reaction to it i think it did way better than ea expected mm-hmm. i think i think the biggest gripes that people have, that i've seen because i've gone through since once i finished the game to like see spoiler cast and all that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. see what happens um one of the, the biggest gripes are there's a lot of quick time events which is true it's puzzle solving that's what you're doing the ending is like i said a bit controversial mm-hmm. on what happens and uh the third thing is the shooting. Like the shooting is probably, in my opinion, the worst part of the game, but it's not bad. If that makes sense, like it's. It is also potentially something there could be DLC for. So at least they're well. I'm interested. The line, to, they I'm might interest, be able to. I'm interested to see. Pump more cash. Well, out of it. I don't know how you like, unless you. You would do when they get caught or whatever. Like. Yeah. Like, but the, that's part of the backstory. Right, but you'd actually get to play it. Like yeah. they probably have different elements to it. And, or a different and, crime. Know. I would love to see one like. Well, they get arrested again. Well, I'd love to see one kind of like their their character, like their character DLC. So go back and play some backstory of Leo. Go back and mm. play some. So Leo would be more fun than Vincent because Vincent, Vincent's backstory is not actually that exciting. Because mm. um, apparently this is his first crime he's ever committed, and that's why he's in jail, which is why he wants to get the fuck out. Versus Leo is a has a 
he's a hardened criminal. Yeah, he's he has a rap sheet that goes on for days. So I think that would be more fun to play. Mm. Um, but I don't think you could do one without the other. And then the question would be: Would you? How would you tie it together with the two-player mechanic? Would you do that? Would you not? That kind you of thing. could even uh, do it from the perspective of the people chasing them. You could have it Be like where you're the cops, yeah, and you're like you're trying to avoid them from breaking out to begin with, and then you're chasing them, and then you have to like locate them detective style. And, mm -hmm. You know, they could definitely play with that that idea. Yeah, um, and it wouldn't have to be very long, just two hours, two and a half hours um, yeah. of just extra extra content. But it would help breed light to the game and also give other people a reason to purchase it. So, um, I mean, and as long as they kept it like only the original owner has to buy the DLC type yeah. situation. But yeah, um, it's definitely you unique i love the idea that they allow you to share it i with love the originals free. for doing this yeah so good on ea doing for doing something good for once um but Cause uh, it's funny because because that's the other thing going against them right now is with them, how much shit ea is getting recently with obviously battlefront and anthem and this all is the stuff, stuff like, that's keeping them afloat honestly yeah. stuff like this i know people, that didn't, I know people like, that didn't buy this game because it's ea and that's fair i didn't yeah. buy star wars battlefront because of ea yeah so that, that's you're paying with your wallet but I'm also such a big fan of indie games. But if yeah, if you support EA indie games over EA AAA games, then potentially they'll start looking at the market differently and stop trying to nickel and dime everyone and be I like, actually, these are the experiences that people want. You Hold know, on, I'm gonna pull up this quote here because there was a quote saying EA is not making a single dollar from a way out. Hmm. Uh, later this month, uh, uh, let's see if I can find it somewhere. Do you think it's because of the whole um, co-op situation? Maybe. Like they had to take a loss on it. So this is straight from Joseph Ferris. Here's the thing, and you have to understand this. This is this is the deal I have for this game. EA is not making a single dollar out of this. Every dollar is going to the developer. They're not making any money, and I've got this and I've got all I've got is support from EA. So that's why he's supporting EA so, so much. So not exactly. So what do they get out of it? Just the ability to say that it's their game and they can advertise it as an EA game? Pretty pretty much. It's almost like uh promotion like when you say hey do artwork for my album and more people will see your so artwork it's not but I'm clear, not paying however, you. it doesn't change the sentiment that EA is releasing a game it's not making money on which is very un EA like beyond revealing perhaps what a generous and good program EA Originals is Ferris quote also needs to shed light on what it's like to develop a game within the system Ferris mentions that not once has EA questioned the vision of the game not that he would let them but that, they, <laughs> but that they've even even that's bad English. But they were even supportive of the game's co-op nature that allows a friend of yours to play the game with you, local or online, without buying. It's an awesome gesture, but not exactly business savvy. Again, not business savvy is not something I would rather say about. Is not something I'd rather say about EA. But it looks like they aren't money hungry and oppressive with their developers as they as many think sometimes. Where's my business hat? It's over there. I should put that Too on for that. Yeah. Can't reach it. I was gonna put my business hat on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's um. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? I mean, it's like you they've got to be making something. There's got to be something side there. of EA. Unless I mean, they, there's well, some kind of maybe they own the IP or something. No. Yeah, maybe they say if this does well, then we make money off your next game. Like, yeah, but or, this might be a passion project for him. And they're like, you know how like they'll have. Um, or it's, big, a good, or it's a goodwill project. When you have a, yeah, when you have actors that want to do directing, and they're like, okay, you got to do a small indie, then you do a big AAA, then you do mm -hmm. a small indie, then you do a big AAA. It might be that kind of a situation where it's like, okay, now we want you to work on a AAA, and we're going to make money off yeah. it. So I don't know. There's something going on there, but um, but cool. I mean, it's it's great that the dude uh, made his money, and uh, it's a it's a nice gesture to people that the only one person has to buy it. It's an interesting niche game with the have to be co-op, but that does encourage you to make friends. Or at least mm -hmm. half friends, um, and you yeah, can't match. Good for him. You have to do it with a friend. There's no. Yeah. There's. It's invite only, essentially. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, I I am a huge fan of it. Somebody who plays a lot of online games, this wasn't an issue for me at all. Mm. If you don't have friends, or if you don't have a significant other to play with, like I can't tell you how awesome it would be to have somebody to play this game with, like on the couch, because I feel like, like when we played, um, what's the the phone game? The phone game. Hidden Agenda. Oh, it reminded yeah, yeah. me a lot of that, but a lot more interactivity than what was right. going on. Right, you're actually controlling the characters yeah. as opposed to just. So to me, that screen. seems like something that's again somebody who doesn't play games a lot that'd be fun to do mm. with them. Um, but yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed my time in it. I don't regret buying it all. I was a little meh on it whether I wanted to buy it or not. I bit the bullet, did it, and I'm now played it once and probably going to play it again with you. So. Cool. I thoroughly enjoyed it. What do you guys think? Do you think it being co-op only hurt a way out? Do you want to see more games like it? Do you think that there should be 
every game should have online and local co-op because I think every game should. Uh, <sighs> Couch co-op is always welcome, I think. Yes. But yep. um, yeah, I what do you guys think there. about that? Do you uh, have you played a way out? Did you enjoy it? Like, Phyllis don't spoil in. the ending, please. Yeah, don't spoil the it's ending, but let us know if you had as good a time with it as Keegan did. Uh, if you want someone to play with. This guy, I'll play with you. <laughs> Are you just worn me out now? Yeah. Cool. Uh, it's $50, 50 a pop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's cool, and uh, I like it. Cool. Any, any thoughts on any of the news this week, of course, let us know as well. Not just a way out, but uh, if you have any thoughts on Masagi Switch games, then feel free to drop those in the comments as well. This has been Indie Please Indie Details, episode 27, our weekly dip in the indie world, and to the indie, the game of indie world... The game of the indie world. The game of the, Three the world weeks of, makes you rusty, man. <laughs> this is our weekly dip in the world of indie games and indie developers. There you go. Where we discuss the news and our excursions throughout the week, topping all off with a discussion that you can join. You can listen to us on your favorite podcast services: Google Play, Stitcher, Apple, Apple Podcasts. Podcasts. SoundCloud. Uh, SoundCloud, so on and so forth. Or you can see our lovely faces. I love two games. Fun news, they're hosted com. on SoundCloud, so they'll probably technically be there first, although I think they show up on the other platforms almost immediately. Yeah, after, they go pretty quickly. That's where they go first. You can continue to continue the discussion online, but off air, uh, on Twitter at love2gamersstl or Discord, link in the description. My name's Keegan. That's Tom. This has been episode 27. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're so glad to be back after the three-week absence. Uh, and remember, going forward, if you're watching this, you, you've heard, but... Gotta be on Sat or Fridays, not Wednesdays. I'm trying to get. You the may notice right it's back. Friday today yes. and not Wednesday. Yes, and that's okay because that's what we're doing now. Yes, is what he's trying to say. So, but thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, welcome to the second level. Bye bye. No